Hi Cathy, it's Elena here from Education Perfect. You might remember me, we spoke on the phone a few weeks ago now. Mark asked me to make you a video to show you how to best dynamicize this question. So let's get started. I'm just going to edit lesson and edit the question. So Mark told me that you would like to dynamicize the number of each group and also the group that it chooses. So I see you've already dynamicized the number of each group here, item 1 and item 2. So I'm going to show you the best way of dynamicizing these group A's and group B's as well. There's a couple of ways of doing this. The first would be to use an if-else statement like Mark suggested. Um, this would definitely be a perfectly reasonable way of doing it, but there's a second way which is maybe just a little bit easier to understand. We're going to use something that's called an array. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. What I'm going to do is for group A, I'm going to select it to choose between group A and group B. And over here with item 2, I'm going to get it to choose between group C and group D. And I think that's definitely the easiest way to go about this, which unfortunately limits our choices just a little bit. But as I said, I think it's the easiest way to go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a random number. And because our arrays will always pick from two options, either A or B, or C or D, we'll only need two numbers to be in our random number. So this might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but I'll come back to it at the end and explain exactly what it's doing. So I'm just going to call it RNG for random number generator. And I'm going to make it a number range. As I said, it only needs two options. I'm going to make the options make it a number range between 0 and 1. The key thing here to note is that it has to start at 0, and I'll explain why in a wee bit. So 0 and 1, we just want to have two numbers, and that's our RNG. As I said, I'll go into a bit more detail about what exactly that variable is doing in a moment. So now, we'll want to make a variable here that picks between group A and group B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new, and I'm going to call it group A or B. And I'm going to make it text, and I'm going to make it a formula, and just a one-line formula. So this is when we're going to start implementing our array. Now, with an array, you always want to have two square brackets. So you open your array with a square bracket, and you close your array with another square bracket. Inside of your array, you put in your two options. Now, because these are going to be letters, you'll need to put them inside quotation marks. So I'm going to open a single quote. I'm going to put in A, which will be my first option. And then I'm going to separate my items in my array with a comma. So, and then we're going to go to the second option, which is B. And I'm going to put that inside quote marks as well. So now we have our array, which is um, A comma B. So what this means is that the first index, for the first item, sorry, in your array is A, and the second item is B. And those little quote marks just tell the program that that it's a letter, not a number. That it's a you're using you're, you're, you're writing in a letter, not not a number or a, another variable. So now uh, I'm going to make a second variable for C or D. So I'm going to call it group again C or D just so it tells me exactly what it's doing uh, and I'm going to do the same thing so text formula and I'm going to go C because that'll be the first thing I want to choose from and the second thing I want to choose from is a D so we wanted our square brackets we want to put our things inside quote marks and we want to separate them with a comma so now we've got our two variables and we're ready to go so now what we need to do is we need to tell the program so when our program chooses A for example at random it's going to choose either A or B so if it chooses A we need to tell it that we want it to use the $1.80 and not the $2.25 so I'm going to make another variable and I'm going to call it um, amount A or B not very creative but there we go so, and I'm going to make it a number variable this time. And again, I'm going to make it a formula, and I'm going to do another array. So we're familiar with this by now. We want to open our square brackets and close them. And we're going to put in 
$1.80. Now notice that this time we don't need the quote marks and that's because it's a number not a letter. So it's not a string so we don't need them and we can leave them off. So 180 and 225. So now that we've got that going, I'm just going to expand this a bit. Okay so now that we've got that knowing we need a way for it um, to tell our program how to link between group A or B and amount A or B. So we need to tell it that when group A or B equals A, then we want amount A or B to be 1.8. So this would be the point where you'd use an if else statement uh, if we were going down that route. But so um, when we use arrays, it's a little bit easier. All we need to do is link it to this RNG variable that we made. So how that is going to work is that when RNG is zero, group A or B will be equal to A. And then we're going to tell it that amount A or B is also going to be equal to 1.8. So the way that works is that go in here, we're just going to edit our array, and then we're going to tell it what to link to, which will be our RNG value variable. So we're going to open close square brackets again, and then we're going to put in there the name of our variable, which is RNG. So now you'll see that in the preview, it's selected option A. And that is because our RNG was zero. So now our RNG is one and you see it's equal to B. So what we've done now is we've linked our group A or B array to the RNG variable, which we told it to be either zero or one. So I'll put that into this array as well and we'll see exactly how it works. So open and close square brackets and we're gonna put in our RNG there. And there we have it. Now we have linked both our amount A or B and our group A or B to both be either A and 1.8 when RNG is 0 or B and 225 when our RNG is 1. So what it's done is it's just linked them all up together so that the program knows which one to pick in certain situations. So I'm going to do the exact same thing now with group C or D. Uh, first, I'm going to tell it to link to our RNG variable, so open close square brackets, RNG. And I'm also going to do the same thing again with amount C or D. So I'm going to make a new variable, I'm going to call it amount C or D. I'm going to get a number, a one line formula. So we don't want to change to multi-step, we always want to use one line when we're using an array. So, and then we're quite familiar with this now, we just open close our square brackets and the numbers that we want are 295 and 355. So 295, 355. Now remember we don't need quotation marks because they're numbers, not letters. And we're going to link it to our RNG variable again. So note that if we didn't put this in, it would just spit out our whole array. So the RNG in square brackets at the end tells it which item of your array to, to take, whether it's the first one or the second one. So I'm going to click OK on that now. And now I should have four variables which are all linked together, which will hopefully tell me what I need to know. So I'm going to put them in your question statement here. So group, group, oh, if I could spell, that would be good, group underscore A or B. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing here, group underscore C or D. That is, again, my spelling is woeful, so good. And now, they'll be linked up nicely, so they should be able to cycle through A and B for the first one, or C or D for the second one. Okay, so in terms of your setup, that's that done. That's all you need to do with your variables. Now, just to show you um, how to set up your working, I'm just going to jump into the explanation here and show you how to link them up. So, I'll show you how which one to use. So, what we'll want is we'll want to find out the total cost to buy two of A and two of C. So I'm just going to copy this step sentence here. So how much will it cost to buy two of group A 
and 2 of group oops, what have I done here? that's not right 2 of group A and 2 of group C so now we know that um, with group A or B we want to refer to that amount A or B so when group A or B is A this will link to the right value for A so um, the total cost will be equal to and I'm just going to jump on a new line here so it'll be item underscore one times the amount amount A or B A or B plus item underscore two times amount C or D so now what we've got is a statement two times a dollar eighty plus two times two ninety five which was hopefully what we wanted with what, what the value for A and C were. Um, so A is $1.80, C is $2.95. Yep, looks like our variables are working as they expected to be. So now we can just multiply these in the normal way. So a new line of working would be something like, uh, I'll just write it on the same line for you, um, equals item underscore one multiplied by amount don't forget to use the whole name, so amount A or B plus item underscore 2 times amount B or C. What have we done here? Amount B or C is not defined, that's because that's not what we want. C or D. <laughs> I've been doing this for years and I'm still getting it wrong. Okay. Okay, great. Amount C or D. So um, now you can see it's evaluated our prices just in the way that a normal variable would. So you can do normal uh, um, operations inside curly brackets with these variables just in the same way that you normally would. Once we've set them up in our array format and we've told them what variable to link to, then it works just in the, in the way that a normal variable would. So once you've set it all up correctly, then you don't need to worry at all about using them here. And you can just use them in the exact way as you normally would with a normal range variable or a list of options. So that is how you set it up with arrays and that's how you link your numbers to your variables. So that's how, uh, as you saw, um, we made sure that our ma amount A or B was the appropriate amount uh, depending on what group A or B was equal to. Um, and I just find this method, although it is a little bit finicky in terms of the syntax, so as I said you need to make sure you include the quotation marks when it's a letter and you also need to make sure that you include your RNG here in square brackets afterwards. But once you've got that part down pat, um, I just find that it's much more efficient when you're working with it and um, it's a lot easier to work out where you've gone wrong if you've accidentally made a mistake. With if-then statements, um, it much more relies on knowledge of JavaScript and being able to <laughs> put in your if-then statements in correctly, which <laughs> um, I always find difficult even today, so uh, it's definitely easy to get those wrong. So I definitely find these to be more easy. Now, I just want to mention a couple of areas where it can be easy to go wrong with arrays. One of the important ones is to make sure that this variable that links your, your, your other array variables, it must start with zero. So if you had five options that you wanted your other variables to choose from, it must start at zero and go zero, one, two, three, four. This is because arrays always consider the first item in an array to be the zeroth item. Unfortunately, it just doesn't start at one, so that's just one of those little quirks that you just have to get used to. It must always start with zero. The other thing that can easily uh, go wrong is that you need to make sure that your variable that links your other variables up here, this is RNG, you need to make sure that it has the same number of options as your arrays. So here we've got 0 and 1, that's two whole numbers, so two options. 
and in all of our arrays we've got two options. Sometimes if accidentally we picked RNG to be between 0 and 2, you'll see what happens. When RNG is 2, it'll give us a whole bunch of errors because group A or B, the variable, doesn't know what is in the next index in your array. There's nothing there, so it's like, oh boy, there's nothing here, I don't know what to pick. So you need to make sure that the, set, the number of options you have in your RNG variable is the same number of options that you have in your array. So that covers pretty much everything that I wanted to go over in terms of how to set this question up. If you have any questions at all, or if you'd like me to go over anything that I've said here in, in a bit more detail, please don't be shy to just send me through a reply email and get me to go over it with you again. I can either give you a call or I can set you up with another video. Um, but hopefully I will have covered everything that's important and you should be able to use this question as a guideline for when you're building more questions. Okay, well that's that done. As I said, you can it'll that question will sit there. So if you want to see how it's how it works, you can always jump in and you can always use that as a guide for when you're building new questions. Again, don't be shy to send me an email if you are unsure of anything or if you need any help with anything further. I'm going to save that and um, like I said, if you need anything, don't hesitate to give me a call and good luck with that, Kathy.